All right, everybody, we are live again, Dynasty Mirror Search for Uhuru. And I have a special guest uh, with us today, Miss Rashida, the dark skinned activist Strober. And uh, today's topic is why should black men only marry dark skinned black women? Now, Rashida, my first question is going to be okay, I'm going to jump right into it real quick. Are there enough dark skinned women to go around for the number of brothers that would be looking for mates? Oh, absolutely. First of all, let me let me address your question real quick. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Why should black men only marry dark skinned women? OK, first, I want to just be real clear. I am not asking that black men only marry dark skinned women. That's never been my contention. What I want black men to do is marry dark, marry and date dark skinned women in balance or in more numbers, because I feel not even that I feel. I know that light skinned women and uh, non dark skinned women of any race, they've always had the upper hand when it came to black men. OK, so when, when you ask the question of are there enough dark skinned black women to go around the black men, y'all are like kids in a candy store. Absolutely. There's enough dark skinned black women to go around. If you look at the number of dark skinned women on a global, I'm not just talking about in the Americas, I'm talking about all, and I watch your channel, so I know that you travel to Africa. I'm right. talking about globally. I'm talking about, you know, dark skinned women of, of uh, and, and, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I want y'all to get with the, to, in my opinion, the classical black dark skinned woman, the real black one, mm. blacker than me with the nappy hair. Oh yeah. Cause some of y'all like to water it down. Y'all will get with, um these darker skinned women, but they'll have to have that, that chili or, or y'all know from TLC, the, the chick that chili with the baby hair. Right, and, right, baby hair. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm talking about the real authentic classical looking dark skinned women. There are more than enough of uh, those type of women to, to go around. And I just don't feel, especially over here in America, that black men gravitate towards them or that they're their first choice. It's always like we are the last, round draft pick and i don't want to be that no more i want to be the first but see let me let me tell you a little bit about myself so at one time right early in my life i was a, a half cool so you know i was chasing uh racially ambiguous chicks uh very 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 light-skinned chicks uh -oh. yeah, yeah 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 i was i was a half cool half cool uh, but I just, you know, I just, I, I just, now I just love dark skin, jet black, beautiful sisters. Like I just, I love them, uh, you know, but at, at one time, you know, I was definitely um, half cooning and, you know, if, if, if it wasn't lighter than a, 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 if it was darker than a brown paper bag, I just, I couldn't do it. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, no, don't judge, don't judge me, don't judge me. This is this was back then. This is back I, then. I want to know what happened to change that mentality. That I, I don't, I don't know. I just started to just to really appreciate, uh, just dark skin, black with like. Okay, here we go. I went to in two thousand and twelve. I went to uh, Namibia, right? Namibia, South Africa. I mean, in Southern Africa, next, it borders South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I just remember seeing just these dark skinned sisters with just jet white, I mean, just bright white, jet black dark skinned sisters with white, beautiful teeth. Oh, wow. And that shit, it, that shit just turned me on. And ever since then, you know, I just, I've been addicted. Wow. But so, let me remember, Sheeta, why, why do brothers have an issue with dark skinned women? Well, I mean, uh, let me talk about it from, let me let me let me start off with with history. OK, this is just my theory. This is my theory of, of how what I call global darkism started. Go ahead. Europeans going over to Africa, coming over to the Americas, going all over the world with their manifest destiny and with their uh, need to run the world because of economic reasons. When they did that. That was to the start of darkism. So for example, and I've never been to Africa, I have a lot of respect for you for, for going to the continent. But what I do know is the Portuguese, for example, when they, they were one of the groups, the European groups that came over to Africa and one of their methods of control was to intermarry and create what they call a buffer race. So right, right. The Portuguese coming in, marrying these darker or having sex with these darker skinned women and having children 
to where those children ended up being the, you know, the, the middle men and women to control the darker people. And we saw that this pattern carried over when with Europeans in America. And so that put light-skinned mulatto people in a position of privilege, in a position to where black, you know, dark-skinned black people looking at them as, you know, more superior to them. That's what happened. And okay. so now we have a situation of if you fast forward to, for example, the Reconstruction era. Right. Um, we saw that uh, uh, the, the mulatto people, they wanted to stay within their own groups. It took them a long time to, to make the decision to intermarry with darker skinned people. And when they did, the dark skinned person had to have a hell of a hell of high education or a hell of high social status in the community or some money or some property. You know, um, there's, there's a book. I can't remember the exact name of the book, but uh, there's a brother that wrote this book about the upper black middle class. I know exactly. It, it, can't, it, it was in, in dealing with the upper middle class, like in the 1800s or like the 1920s, right? Yes. And then it, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, modern society. And he told the truth about how black, the black cl middle class and the upper middle class was based on a color system. And so from there, we see that now and we live in, you know, in our modern age where we have the remnants of that still going on with and it's been reflected through things like rap music, um, even through the college experience still, even in the prison system, the school system, um, in marriage, we see that black men have historically, and I know that some of y'all do not want to hear this, but I'm only dealing with what is factual. I'm not making yeah. up off the, off the top of my head. I'm right. my experience and off of history. Black men have chosen lighter skinned women historically, and it stems from of course, a white supremacy and black self-hatred. And right. what, what I'm doing with dark skin activism is I want to say, let's work on that. Let's reverse that. that. Let's come back to black. Let's come all the way back, back to, because we got to think about it like this. Black men were originally with dark skinned black women before yeah. Europeans came into Africa. That's a fact. So what's, it's like, what's the problem? Okay, you know what I've been noticing, Rashida, and help me out with this. I've been seeing a lot of dark-skinned sisters with bottom shelf brads. What's a bottom shelf brad? A bottom shelf brad is the equivalent is a white guy who is the equivalent to a Pookie and Ray Ray in the black community. What's 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 this uh, what's this phenomenon? I've been seeing a lot of bottom shelf brads with with dark-skinned black women. What what's uh? Can you explain or do you do you know why that's the that's the case? Uh, well, I can't speak for why these black women, these dark skinned black women are doing that, but I can give you my theory on it. But Go first, on. let me say I have never dated a non black man. My preference is black men. So the only thing that I could come up with is a lot of these dark skinned women. And I felt this way myself, but I'm not weak. A lot of these dark skinned women have felt so neglected and rejected mm. and unloved mm. and uncared for and unattracted to to black men that it's like it's a weak move it's it's just to say you know what this is gonna what's gonna make me feel better let me go to let me go deal any type of white man is good um i was watching divorce court uh, i think a couple of weeks ago and i saw there was a, a dark-skinned black woman on there very educated and intelligent natural hair and she was with a racist white man oh, that's normal that's normal that's normal yeah. Yeah, she was with a, the, the man admitted to calling her, you know, racial derogatory names right. and she was with them. So it was like the like you said, the bottom shelf rats. Right. And it's the it's this sick psychology and mentality that instead of me staying with my black man and working things out and figuring out what our problems are and how we solve it, I'm just gonna run off and get me whatever white man pays me any attention. And if it happens to be a bottom Shell Brad, I hope I'm saying your the name you gave him. Bottom shell Brad, bottom shell Brad. Bottom shell Brad. If it happens to be a bottom shell Brad, so so be it. It's better than, um, you know what I don't have, and it's also to say, well, look, black man, look what I got. I got me a white man, and he's better than you. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the mentality that I think it is. But it it, it really stems from a weakness. It's all about because you can see. In order to be a dark skinned woman or a dark skinned man and, and stay within your race and love yourself, you have to be strong. You have to be a strong minded, strong willed person and understand why 
you're fighting to be together. It's not just necessarily about, um, you know, a sexual attraction. It's bigger than that. It's about saving our race. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. It's about saving our people. Let me give a couple shout outs real quick. Shout out to um, brother uh, King Nick for the super chat. Attraction cannot be negotiated. A man will gravitate towards whoever he finds attractive. You cannot expect a balance in an unfair world. And a shout out to Falcon Black. Falcon Black says you have a light skinned man. Is, is that true? I do. I have. A, okay. Let me address that. Let me address that. And I make, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I make no bones about that. Um, first of all, I was married to a pitch black, tar black, blue black, purple black man. And I say that in a good way because he's very handsome. Um, nappy haired black man for 10 years. OK. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are some circumstances under which I married him that was for black empowerment. I'm not going to really get too much into yeah, that. I'm, I'm nosy. Can you get into that? <laughs> the circumstances I would really, I mean, I mean, you're not going to get locked up if you get into it, but can you, I mean, are you like, is it this fed related? Like, can you get into it? Well, it's not, I mean, I kind of feel like, well, it's not that I feel like I know that sometimes some black men, they will know, I'm talking about on an international level, they will know that you're a pro-black pro black woman and you're really down for the cause. And sometimes they'll use that against you. And that's what happened to me in this particular relationship. I love this man, and but I also it, it was also about the unfairness that I see going on um, in, in international policy, which determines who comes to this country and who doesn't. So anyway, my ex-husband is from Jamaica and we ended up getting married and I did a lot of things out of love to for him. And he didn't treat me right. I don't want to talk too much about it. I'm going to write about this stuff. He okay. didn't treat me right. But anyway, I was married to him for 10 years. Loyal, submissive. We always talk mm. about the submissive, oh, dark skin. Women. That's a lie. Very submissive. Did what he asked me to do. Um, cook, clean, all that. Whatever. I was there. He didn't treat me right. So anyway, long story short, I ended up after fighting to save my marriage. I was the one fighting for it. I decided I'm not going to continue to be trampled over and cheated on and walked over. And I divorced him. I filed for a divorce and we got divorced in July uh, the, the, of this year. The divorce was final. I don't go looking for men. Rule number one, ladies, well, I don't care what color you are. Right. Black women. I don't look for men. They come for me. You have to pursue me. So just as he did. My current boyfriend, who is light skinned, and I had a light skinned one before that, they pursued me. Okay. And it just happened, it just so happened that the man is a light skinned black man. And I'm not going to apologize for it because what I hate is that I hate it when black people try to put dark skinned women on trial for dating um, all tones of black men. Because here's the thing. Dark skinned women, and this has been proven by the research, are the most adversely impacted by darkism. Some people call it colorism. I call it darkism. Darkism, yes. Yes. So it's not, see, with the man, see, and, and I know this because I, I dated a really dark skinned Ghanaian. He's super black, super okay. intelligent. But he was able to overcome his issues by getting his education, and he has a good job, and he has money, and he had no problem. So, so, so are you finding a lot of dark skinned men who are insecure in their darkness? No, because that's what I'm saying to you. This is what I'm saying. Even if they are insecure, the man can overcome that with money, a job status and, you know, not even necessarily looking good. It's all about the money. It's about his ability to provide. But a dark skinned female uh, uh, it's harder. It doesn't matter if you have the education because a man is not looking at you for no education. They're looking at you for how you look. So for a dark skinned woman, her power is always in her beauty. And if a dark skinned women are deemed to be the ugliest, then what of our power? So you can't compare the dark skinned woman's experience with the dark skinned man's experience in terms of especially the relationship dynamic. You can't because all the dark skinned man has to do is get some money. And get a you know get a nice car and just go do his thing, and the women are gonna flock to him. That's not the case necessarily for a dark skinned woman. We gonna have to be on our a game. Everything is gonna have to be damn near perfect. And if it ain't, maybe you might have to take care of your man financially. You gonna have to be an asset. You know, it, it's it's a different dynamic. So I don't feel that it's fair for black people to try to put me on trial for dating a light skinned black man. This is light skinned black man I'm dating right now. He's not the first 
um, light skinned man. I was engaged to a light skinned man about 10 years ago. I mean, he's not the first light skinned man that I, black man that I've dated. So, so people in the chat are, are calling you hypocritical um, because they're saying you're, you're telling, but well, at the beginning, you get the disclaimer that you're not trying to discourage black men from dating light skinned women. Mm -hmm. But people are saying that you do that. Is that true? No, that's not true. I don't okay. I've never I've never told black men to exclusively people got to listen carefully to the words that I come. See, I deal with details. I've never told black men to exclusively and only date dark skinned women. What I've always said is black men need to come back to dark skinned women in balance. Uh -huh. in balance. That does not mean exclusively date. And, and, and it's hypocritical for people to be trying to call me out for encouraging black men to date more dark skinned women when dark skinned women are the victims. Light skinned women, they always been on top. Mm. Why are people complaining and, 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 and defending black men continuing to date light skinned women? It's so, that's so selfish. I find that to be so selfish. Mm. So there's a, a light skinned sister, uh, a Nigerian sister that, um, I've been uh, somewhat dealing with in Lagos. Um, am I a coon for dealing with? She, she's very light skinned. Am I, am I a coon for dealing with her? Like, would I be a coon? You, no, you're not a coon. Um, okay. now you would, I would consider you a coon if you mm -hmm. decided that that's all you wanted to, to do. Okay. 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 If you felt like she was like the standard for black beauty, for black female mm -hmm. beauty. Because light skinned women, they're not the standard for black female beauty. They're, they're not. And, and I absolutely love dark skinned sisters. Like I love them, but it's just this light skinned girl. Just she's been, you know, she chose me, and she's been treating me very well. But I love dark skinned women. Okay. She, she, let me ask you this: Would you mind if your man had two more than one dark skinned woman? Like, are you into polygamy if it's oh. two dark skinned sisters? <laughs> no, I'm very territorial. I have to be number one. I have to be the queen. Or it's nothing at all. I walk real fast, so I don't. I don't play that. But I mean, I'm not hating on political, you know, polygamous relationships if that's the agreement, but not in Rashida Strober's world. That's not gonna happen. Okay, so no, so a man, your man can't have two dark skinned. Um, Dark skinned sisters, not at all. You won't even consider it. Never. I won't be there. I won't be a part of it. Okay. Demetrius Dees, thank you for the super chat. He says, So why why should we apologize for what we have then? I don't know what he's uh referring to. But uh so Rashida, what, what why this uh dark skin activism, what what made you go this route? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question. Okay, I'm gonna try to make it give y'all the condensed version take of your time, it. Take your time. Okay, back in the in, in, in when I was growing up as a teenager in the nineties. And as a child, I was talked about really bad for having dark skin, nappy hair, and being skinny. It started, it really started in preschool. <laughs> but I mean, it really hit when I got to middle school and high school. Um, and also in my family, I have five brothers. I was the only girl. And my brothers, uh, they won't admit to this. They'll say, you know, they're probably embarrassed by it. But I have a cousin who's light skinned in my family. They always treated her better. She has the light skin and the so-called good hair. Um, she got gifts for being light skinned with good hair. Um, I mean, how do you get a gift for being light skinned and good hair? How, do, how does that oh, gift work? Well, I mean, you get money. They give you money. They tell you that you're pretty. They let you drive their new cars when they get it. They take you out to eat. They buy you clothes. Oh, I'll be here all day explaining that. You, you about to make me mad. I'm, try, I'm trying not to you have flashbacks here. No, no, no. Have flashbacks. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, I love my light skinned, good haired cousin. I know she watches me sometimes, and it's no shade on her, but I'm just here to tell the truth. She got treated better for being light skinned with good hair, and my own brothers were a part of it. So, for example, sometimes they didn't, they would, you know, let people know that that was their cousin as opposed to letting people know that I was their sister because I was dark skinned. One of my brothers, he had a wedding. And I had my hair natural and he was telling me that, you know, I didn't I didn't look good. You got to you got to look better. You got to. He was embarrassed of me, my own brother. I don't get along with him to this day. I saw him walking down the street and kept right on going past them because I don't like you. You treated me disrespectfully. So all of these experiences. Then when I get to school, I got people calling me spot monkey, burnt, um, crispy, I, you know, I, all kinds of names. And I used to be very quiet and introverted. I know I'm talking right now, but y'all, I was quiet, introverted person. So I was always a good student. But when I got to middle school, I started getting tired of it. I tired of people attacking me. I got into a couple of fights. I got suspended from school. I got in trouble a lot because, 
you know, I wasn't going to have people continuously calling me black and ugly and thinking that I was going to keep taking that. Um, I remember getting into a fight with a real dark skinned boy who taunted me for the whole year. We got off the bus. I had a lock in my hand and I just started banging him in the head. But, you oh, know, okay. that's 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 what was that? That's assault. Well, I mean, I was like in what the fifth, sixth grade. So I didn't know. All I know, I was I was defending myself and nobody was there to defend me. And I got tired of the BS. So, you know, going through all of that growing up in my family and in school, I as I grew up and came of age, I started looking for somebody to do exactly what I do. Talk only about dark skin. And then in my family, I would try to talk about this. I even got kicked out of certain family members' houses because they were in denial, telling me that my great grandmother was an Indian and her, and that's why my cousin got the long, pretty hair. And I just, you know, all this crazy stuff. And we would get into arguments to where they would throw me out of their house because I was like, y'all are racist against dark, the dark skinned people in the family. Then I had a lighter skinned relative who told me that I was jealous of another light-skinned person in the family for absolutely no reason. I'm like, all these attacks just coming at me. So I kind of disassociated myself from my family because they just seemed to didn't like dark-skinned people. Even my own grandmother, may she rest in peace, she died at 95. She didn't like me because I was dark-skinned. She liked my light-skinned cousins and, again, gave them gifts, gave them money, all of that because they were light-skinned with good hair may she rest in peace and I'm, i was the one that came to the nursing home and took care of her when she you know got old and was in the nursing home she's a nurse on right street from where i live so i went through all of these things growing up and i said i got an opportunity to, to speak during african-american history month otherwise known as harambe at saint petersburg college in 98. and i decided that i was going to talk about only dark skin i'm gonna do i said i'm gonna do exactly the opposite of what people keep saying this was before social media everybody was telling me in my family you just jealous you crazy don't, don't nobody want to hear that crazy stuff i said i'm gonna talk about dark skin and there was a 200 dollars prize at stake and i went up against an indian dark skin young lady she was one of my opponents and uh somebody else i can't remember but anyway i wound up speaking about the dark skin sudanese model alec weck I had purchased a copy of Elle magazine. She was on the cover of Elle magazine, uh, bald headed, dark skin. And I just couldn't believe that these white people would put her on the cover. And I did some research on her and she was going through the same thing I was going through. Black people were saying she was manly, ugly. She does. She's not the representative of, of black female beauty. And I said, I'm going to talk about her. And at the time, Lauren Hill was big. I love me some Lauren Hill. Blessings to Lauren Hill. But Lauren Hill was not specifically talking about being dark skinned, but she was just being a beautiful, dark skinned, nappy headed, talented, intellectual, dark skinned woman. And she really put, she really, I will give her the credit because she really put dark skinned women. When she came out, it got a little bit better for me as a dark skinned female. I remember my son's father, he moved down here from DC and he saw me and he liked me and he was so handsome. And I couldn't believe her. People were saying I was ugly. And he liked me. I could not believe that this black man liked me, but he was one of them conscious brothers that genuinely liked dark skinned, nappy headed, skinny black women. And he liked me and I was like in shock. But anyway, um, I decided to talk about Alec Weck and the same hate I get on social media, I was getting it in 98. So that prepared me for it. And at, in 1998, when I spoke about the dark skinned Alec Weck, that gave birth to dark skin activism and I ended up winning the $200 prize. And that was just from there on, I started giving lectures on only dark skin, writing plays. Um, then when social media came around, I was the first person to introduce a dark skin platform. Everybody said I was crazy. Talking about what the hell is a dark skin activist? Now I see people, they copied, the, they mocked the hell out of me. Now they copying me. But that's pretty much the history of how it all got started. It came from my own pain from dealing with my family, not accepting me for being dark skinned, for, for showing favoritism to the lighter skin family members, you know, just treating me bad, you know, for being dark skinned and not being accepting of me. And now some of these same people, they got dark skinned kids. Now you got a dark skinned kid. So, so now you see, you understand? So I, I, I had to, I was doing it for myself as therapy, but the good thing about it is 
it's helped other people because I do darkism counseling. I've been doing it for years. I speak in schools about uh, darkism. I'm able to help dark skinned kids. When I see it, the, the foolishness going down in schools, I'm able to come in and help them to alleviate it. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's done a lot of great things. I know I'm, I, I went off on a tangent, but that's pretty much how dark skin activism got started. Yeah, we're having, we're having some issues with the uh, stream. It's, uh, it's, it's just, it's buffering. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, I don't, I don't know why people can't see the uh, stream, guys. I, I apologize. I don't know what's uh, uh oh what's going on. Yeah, people can't uh, people can't see the stream. I apologize. Let me read off the super chats. Admiral May, Med J. I'm offended by the show. My mom is light skinned. Admiral, shut up. Uh, appreciate the super chat though. Um, now, dude, I have a medium brown complexion, but I saw what my younger brother, who is very dark skinned, and my best friend, who is also very dark skinned, went through growing up. Stop pretending as if she's not speaking the truth. Uh, shout out to JP. I'm trying to scroll to the top. Yeah, like I said, we have some other super chats, but there's just something that's wrong with the, uh, it just, it keeps uh, buffering. I can see oh, it. Okay, we're back now. Okay, I think we're back now. We're back now. Okay, we're back. Can't, can't, press one if you guys can see me. Uh, press one in the chat room. I can see you. We back? We back, you guys? Okay. All right. So we're good. Okay. Okay. We're back. Yeah. I don't know what happened. There were some other, uh, super chats. I can't, I can't get to them, but, uh, another, somebody else was like, um, you know, baby oil, uh, looks better on dark skinned women. I do agree. I believe that baby <laughs> oil definitely glosses better on dark skinned women. Like what are you, what are your thoughts on it? Does the baby oil gloss better on you, Rashida? It does. I, I'm a fan of coconut oil. I coconut use oil. Okay. Does the coconut oil does it gloss better on you? It glosses real good. But let me let me just say this now because I noticed that some people will will look at dark skinned women as like only as a sexual type of fetish. I, I that's while that's great and that's wonderful. I want substance. I want relationships. I want marriage. I want stability. That's really what I'm after. Um, when I talk about bringing black men back to dark skinned women in balanced numbers, you, you, you see what I'm saying? So, about Falcon Black said Vaseline, ain't nobody using Vaseline no more in 2018. That's, that's, that's struggle sex. <laughs> All right, that's ghetto struggle sex with uh, Vaseline, Falcon Black. If you don't take your ass out of here, Falcon Black, talk about some Vaseline. That is struggle uh, gutter sex. That's what that is. That's what that is. Uh, Shayna Femi, shout out to Shayna Femi. She says uh, shea butter gloss is better. Shea butter, yeah. I like shea butter too. Yes. Yes. Uh, there were some other uh, uh, questions. So, okay, let me ask you this. And I, I think you just said it that you got in a fight with another dark skinned uh, man. Do you think dark skinned people discriminate against other dark skinned people? If they're dark, is there dark skin or dark skin uh, crime? Do you believe so? Yes. Um, and, and that was the problem um, in high school. This was like the, the guy that really, really hurt me the worst. He was like super black. I'm talking about pitch tar black. Every day this guy saw me and I, I thought he was so handsome. Uh -huh. he, he, he was the one that would bring the negative attention from the basketball team, the football team onto me. He would start it all off. And what I noticed is that dark skinned people, it could be a man or a woman, when they want to get cool points with other black people or other popular people, they'll, they have no problems going in on another dark skinned person. Case in point, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, he's dark skinned. Kevin Hart has made jokes, documented jokes, going in on dark skinned women saying that dark skinned women got bad credit. It's always dark skinned people know that if they sell their other darker skinned brother or sister under the bus, they know that they can gain some cool. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, that's the easy joke. That's the yeah, easy it's really joke. Sad. It's, really, it's really sad. And, and it's like, you know, dark skinned people don't realize. And here's the thing about darkism darkism can be perpetuated by anybody, including dark skinned people. And yes, I do feel like the biggest offenders in my life um, of darkism, aside from white people and their racism which is a special kind of darkism is was was dark-skinned people i mean they were the ones that were really making me feel bad about being dark-skinned there were some light-skinned people in my family too but when you go when you're in school it's a different ball game when you, you when you're a kid in high school middle school 
and people going in on you for being dark skinned it is it's it's a totally different feeling and it begins to shape and develop how you feel about yourself and so yes dark skinned people are very guilty of committing darkism against other dark skinned people absolutely somebody brought up angel ramirez in the chat Can uh -oh. you here we go yeah <laughs> Okay, Angel Ramirez. Let me talk about Angel Ramirez. Back in 2015, I didn't know who the hell he was. Angel Ramirez, I had a beef with Kendrick Lamar talking about him and his light-skinned fiance. So Angel Ramirez contacted me like a lot of other people did, asked me for an interview. I was like, okay, cool. I did the interview with him. This was back in 2015. We both had the interviews, agreed to have the interviews on both of our channels. They've been on there for years. But the thing is, with Angel Ramirez, I feel like, and I have told him this. Let me tell y'all something. I don't say stuff on social media, or I will tell you to see your face if you saw me in person. And a lot of people already know. I feel like Angel Ramirez is one of the people that is stealing my work, has, has copied my work and not giving me my due respect. And I don't, one of the reasons why I don't really like what he's doing is because he's a light skin and he didn't like the fact that I told him that I didn't feel that he was all the way black in the interview. I told him straight up the straight up truth. He has light skin, he has the good hair and he's pimping that to me. He's pimping that. If he's honest with himself, he's pimping that. He's built he's built his audience off of the fact that he knows that a lot of black women will look at him and be like, "Oh my god, he's so cute." Well, let me tell you, me personally, I would I don't think you all that. And I mean, I'm not just saying that cuz I don't really care for you. I just you're not I wouldn't like want to date you. I wouldn't be falling all over you. You would have to come for me. That's how that go. Anyway, I'm, I don't chase after men. But anyway, I confronted him about this. I did make. You don't, you don't chase after men, Rashida. You never. You yeah. never chase after men. You should never chase after men. I don't care what. I don't care how ugly and black somebody say you are. That's the one thing that I learned. I got that from my dark skinned dad. My dad. He he did. A, he was one of the few people in my life, black men in my life, who loved me and told me I was beautiful. And I watched my mom who's a dark skinned woman, my mama don't play that. So one thing I've never done, I don't chase after men. You have to pursue me. That's, it has to be that way, or I'll just, we'll just keep it moving. And dark skinned women need to understand this. You do not go and chase after any man. We don't do that. You let them chase you, that's how that go. But anyway, Angel Ramirez, I, I mean, he got these black women some of them are just fools falling head over heels for him. Oh, he fine. You're not. You're 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 a benefactor of light skin privilege. But the bigger issue to me is I don't like the fact that you're a benefactor off of the struggle of what dark skinned people go through. You're not. I don't even want to get off because of, y'all y'all. Let me ask you this: my, you know, I'm 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 caramel. I'm I'm caramel complexion. Am I do I I mean what's what's my situation? I'm like in the middle. So am I okay. am I benefiting off a of dark skin privilege too, being caramel? No, because here's the thing with brown skin people. Okay. Y'all okay. are y'all are safe. Y'all are the safe color. Okay. Nobody talks bad about y'all. Like if you observe the situation of uh, you know if you put a dark skin light skin brown skin person in the room even there was a study that was several studies that was done that even brown skin women for example they were more likely to get married than darker skin women so it, the, the brown skin people you don't hear and even when i was in school and in other social settings around black people i never heard black people disparage brown skin people your color in fact your color is considered to be a good, nice, safe, handsome, or pretty color. You're, you're just not going to get the brunt of darkism from black people. Now, you'll get racism, obviously, but people are not going to look at you and be like, oh, my God, he's whatever because he's brown skin. That's not going to happen. Not black. I have a uh, I have a light skinned friend that she told me that she wishes she was dark skinned. Do you have any uh, advice for her? Um. <laughs> My advice is to be yourself. I don't think you should wish to, if, you, if God made you light skin, you know, enjoy your light skin, it, you know, be yourself. Um, that's my whole thing because that's the problem. People putting skin tones, certain skin tones on a pedestal instead of looking at uh, all skin tones as equal. And I'm not a dark skin supremacist. I'm not going to sit here and say that dark skin is better than light skin or brown skin. What I want is equality. So you should be comfortable in the skin that God gave you. 
what we all should be doing is working towards social and economic equalization for all skin tones. That's what I really want. Let me read out a super chat. Echo today, Bowden. Uh, thank you for the super chat. He says, dark skinned women will always have issues because we don't control any media or real infrastructure. We need a thriving patriarchy to support them. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. I, I, I totally agree. And, and that's why I love social media. I hate social media, but I love it. Because mm -hmm. the thing about social media is social media has given dark skinned women the ability to have a more of a voice. I mean, I brought dark skin activism onto social media and was able to reach a wider audience. So I think that's, that there's going to be a paradigm shift with that because of social media, where we now have the ability to build our own um, uh, versions of Facebook and versions of Instagram and promote dark skin beauty more and equalize it more. So. All right, let's see what else we got here in the chat room. Uh, everyone, thank you for uh, joining us. Make sure you hit that like button. We have 230 people watching, only 69 likes. Stop being... Uh, <laughs> Let me go uh, make sure I like the video. Hit the like button. Uh, some people are asking, do you have any uh, dark-skinned friends you can hook them up with? <laughs> do I have any? <laughs> oh, you, you know what? It's funny. I used to have a dark-skinned website that i had lunch for dating this was a couple of years ago um that website is no longer in function so i wish i wish that i could do that but you know that's the reason why i do dark skin activism because a part of it is just talking directly to black men to say black men please consider dating and marrying a dark skinned woman and wonderfully enough uh, black men have actually done it i have stories where i have this one man he he was with a he left his wife for a white woman, dark skinned wife, and he started watching my videos and he went back to his dark skinned wife. No lie, no lie. I had, a, I went and actually met him in person and he's back with his dark skinned wife. So while I don't have any dark skinned friends per se to set you up with, the world is full of beautiful dark skinned women, like all over the world. Go get you one, go find you one, they're there. Uh, somebody says dark skin activism. Like, do you have like a group? Like, I mean, like, do you guys go out and protest in the streets? Like, how does this dark skin activism work? Excellent question. Okay. Um, dark skin activism really consists of my plays about only dark skin, my books about only dark skin, my lectures that I do in the community about only dark skin. That's what dark skin activism is. Now, before social media, what I was doing, I was a member of a group called the Uhuru Movement. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of the Uhuru Movement started by Chairman Omali Ashitella. Is that, is that, is that, uh, what's the guy's name? Ghazi Kozo, Ghazi? Uh... Yes, but he's now associated with it now. But again, before social media, he wasn't, I, I joined the Uhuru Movement back in 1998. And my father, who was in the Nation of Islam, him and the Chairman Omali Ashitella were very good friends. So this was Ghazi probably was like in middle school or elementary school. He was nowhere around. But she, how old are you? So what was that? How old are you? Oh, I'm 40. Okay. You look good so, for 40. God, I, I didn't, you look in your 20s. Veganism. Go vegan. That's what, I, that's, that's what dark skin we need to do. Go vegan and do a lot of running. Do a lot of cardio. I like, I like chicken and, you know, African food and lamb and stuff. That's going to be hard for me. I gotta have a vegan, the veganism for dark skinned okay. women, for dark skinned people. That's what I advocate for. But I was a member of the Uhura movement. And while I was in the Uhura movement, oh man, we we protested um, police brutality, housing discrimination. I started the Malcolm X free tutoring program. Um, I did food drives, and I'm not gonna lie, for dark skinned people, I sure did. I did this, this part on my own. I'm not gonna put that on the Uhura movement. But it was a mixture of me working in the Uhuru movement as a grassroots organizer and just looking at the situation of dark skinned people in poverty in St. Petersburg, where I live, and helping them. And this was before social media. So this is what I have been doing. Um, and now what I've done with dark skin activism is I've simply turned it into something to where people can stomach in a more entertaining way through the plays. Because I have a play called The Dark Skin Woman's Revenge, which I just performed in Atlanta about two weeks ago. And I do the play. I've been doing it for years. I do the lectures. I write the books and I come on social media. And so believe it or not, doing this form of dark skin activism, 
a lot of people. Plus, a lot of dark skin, light skin, white people contact me all the time behind the scenes for counseling. And this, this is what I do. So, I mean, I'm, I'm down for protests for whatever. I'm down for, you know, all types of social justice for, for our people. Go into the counseling a little bit more. So, you know, like what, like how do these counseling sessions, sessions work? Oh uh, man, they're, they're variable. Let me just give you a couple of examples. Yeah, give me an example. Some, example. Some people, one time I had this light skinned guy, for example, he emailed me and he had the headline, I'm guilty. <laughs> I was okay. like, what? So he writes a long letter explaining how he's light skinned and he knows he's good looking and all the women want him. And he d d decided to date a dark skinned woman. And how he mistreated her when he got mad, calling her, you know, all kinds of derogatory names about her dark skin. And he was asking me to help him. And so I kind of went back and forth with him um, via email, just kind of counseling him and encouraging him. So that's one example. Um, there's another person that I've dealt with. I'm not going to say their name, but th their situation is they, they ended up homeless on drugs. Um, and it was a mixture of counseling. And while I don't have a lot of money, if I do have money, sometimes people will donate to me. If I see that some of these people are in need, I will give them some money and help them out. He was one of those people. Um, I would spend time talking to him on the phone when he felt like he want, wanted to have a relapse to counsel him and encourage him not to go that route because he was living in a state that was racist, societal, dark skinned people who have came to me, who I talked to and counsel extensively just going back and forth whenever they needed me uh some people will call some people have my phone number some people will facebook message me some people will email me some people i have met in person where we've sat down and we've had conversations where they just want to sit down and talk to me and vent. so the counseling can come in many different forms also i speak in the schools where if i see kids picking on a dark-skinned kid and i saw this a lot I shut the whole thing down. We shut down. We forget the mathematics and the arithmetic and the reading. We're going to talk about darkism. So it comes in many, many forms all the time. Also, I perform my play many times for free in high schools where I've had young men that have came to me and said, you know what? I don't want to deal with dark skinned women because they too ghetto and wretched and loud. I had this one 10th grader that came to me and he was like, I don't want to feel like this, though. Can you help me? So me and him went back and forth on how he could get over that feeling that way, letting him know that all the all dark skinned women do not behave this way. You got to look at it from this aspect. And so it comes in many different forms. I go off of the person, whatever the person brings to me, I kind of work with them where they're at, if that makes sense. Tell, tell us more about your play. Uh, it's, it's a one woman play, right? Just you and. Yes, absolutely. You know what? I want to say this, though. I yeah. wrote this play because I wanted to give work to dark skinned women because I lived out in Los Angeles and I saw firsthand the discrimination that dark skinned women face. So when I was out there, I had an agent. They wanted me to get rid of my um, dreadlocks at the time and I refused yeah. to get rid of my locks. They wouldn't give me no work. So it's a lot of discrimination going on against darker skinned sisters out in LA. There's only a few tokens out oh, yeah, there. Yeah, 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 I already know that. In fact, somebody brought up, uh, you know, with Martin, with Tisha and Pam. That was a classic example of. Right. So, so I wrote a dark skinned woman's revenge because I wanted to give, create work for dark skinned women. But here's the thing. Go ahead. I started presenting it to dark skinned women. They didn't believe in it. They said, <laughs> oh, this is stupid. This don't make no sense. Why are you casting us in this light? So I couldn't get people to get on board with it. So I said, you know what? I have talent. I could play these characters. Let me just go ahead and turn this into a one woman show. So a dark skin woman's revenge is actually a sequel to another play that I wrote back in 2006 called a dark skin girl's triumph, the Rashida Strober story. So I just decided to expand on that and talk about the dark skin women's experience in more detail. And so I'm playing five different dark skin characters, from different socioeconomic backgrounds and I'm telling their real raw true stories and just giving it to people just in the raw and and people just absolutely love it um I started performing it back in 2006 it took me a long time to get an audience for it and get it off the ground but it's gaining a lot of steam and I eventually wrote the book version of a dark skin woman's revenge as well and so it's just a, it's a play that's telling I'm telling the stories of dark skin women 
You got the ratchet dark skinned woman. You got the bougie dark skinned woman. You got the self hating dark skinned woman. You, you know, um, there's a mixture of dark skinned women. I'm playing all these different characters, and they are based on some of the women in my family. There's a church lady in there that is based off of it. It is shout out to my mama. It is based off her. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> her being dark skinned and people going in on her when she going to church speaking in tongues and they calling her saying all kind of stuff behind her back but she just is oblivious to it and she just keeps going but it's a really wonderful play and I really enjoy performing it so yeah now let, let me uh, let me ask you this how do you feel about uh, skin bleaching I know uh, skin bleaching has been an issue in the places like Jamaica and Africa what are your thoughts on uh, skin bleaching I absolutely hate it. I, I want to get rid of it. I want to dismantle it. It's a billion dollar industry. Um, we need to get rid of it. It's just, it's, it's another reflection of self hate of white supremacy doing a good job in convincing black people all over the world and not just black people because it's a global issue. You got Asians and Indians who also bleach. White people have done a very good job of convincing us that their skin tone is superior. And what it's done is it's created this industry where you got black women feeling like if they bleach their skin, they're going to be able to get a man, a better you know, man, a, a career, education. And it's really sick. And so what we got to do is we got to just dismantle it completely. We got to reverse it. We got to work on the mind state of, of, uh, of, of black women all over the world and let them know that you do not need to bleach your skin. Plus, the, the health ramifications of it. It's very yeah. dangerous. Oh man, goodness. I've, I've seen it. It's all, I mean, all you got to do is type in skin bleaching on YouTube and you can see the damage, the skin damage that it causes to these people that are out here bleaching their skin. And some of these people are going so far as to bleach their own children. Yeah. And going as, as far as taking, digesting pills that's supposed to bleach. It's, it's, it's just horrific. And, you know, I'm against it. We got to get rid of it. We got to fight against it and we got to dismantle it. It's just as simple as that. Hmm. So, yeah, because I know Black China is selling her uh, bleaching cream for $250. I, I heard about that. And she's a, you know, she's a, a complete buffoon. Right. Uh, I have no respect for her. I have no respect for any Black person that perpetuates white supremacy and darkism at the expense of other black people. I have zero respect and she should be boycotted. People like her should be boycotted. Well, how, how, well how, do you, like, how do you boycott a, a Instagram thought? Well, I mean, there's there's a myriad of ways. I mean, you, you, you make videos about that person encouraging other people not to support their product. You go on Instagram, um, obviously this person is an attention seeker. Okay, you want attention, mm -hmm. let's flip it. Let's explain to people why you shouldn't buy her product, why she is the problem, why she's perpetuating white supremacy. You understand? Because a lot of these people, they are getting fame, they're getting rich off of black suffering. And she's a light skinned woman, which makes it even more despicable because what you're saying is that your light skin is superior and you have other young black women looking at you all over the world feeling like oh i want to look like her and have her life let me buy her skin ble bleaching cream you are a cancer you are an evil person i can't you know I, I really have no respect for people like that so she can be boycotted using social media don't buy her products encourage people not to buy her products are you familiar with sammy sosa the baseball I, player yes what are, your, what are your thoughts on that situation? That that just came. In fact, that's the the uh, skin bleaching gone wrong, right? What are your thoughts on him? Same thing. It's a it's an absolute sickness. It's a it's it's a mental illness. And again, we know that the root cause of this is nothing but white supremacy. Well, anytime, and it, it it's even deeper when you have a man doing it. Because as I talked about earlier, dark skinned women. Our power is it's in our beauty, but people are saying we're not beautiful, so therefore it's diluting our power. But for a man, it's not about beauty. It's about how much money he can make. So for a Sammy Sosa, as a man, you don't have the issue of, are people gonna see me as beautiful even though I'm, I'm not white or light skinned? 
So you gotta you gotta look at him as even you know even more sick because this man feels for whatever reason. I would like to ask him why are you doing this? Is this for people to view you as more handsome? Is this for you to make more money? What what is what is your purpose? Why are you doing this? It really doesn't make any sense. But it just goes to show you the level of white is right. This, the, the, the psychosis that we are under as, as, as black people and people of color, that we really feel that in order for us to be successful, in order for people to respect us, that we need to be lighter. It is a sickness. The man is sick, mentally ill. And then how do you, how do you feel about dark skinned women with like blonde weaves? Like I mean, I've been seeing that lately. A lot of very jet black dark skinned women with blonde weaves. Like does it like do you are you an activist with for dark skinned women with weaves and, and blonde weaves and yakis? That bothers me a lot. That bothers me a lot because for me, the classically beautiful dark skin or black woman is a dark skinned woman with nappy hair. Mm. Okay, that's so. For to see a dark skinned woman, and I see these types of women all the time in St. Petersburg, where I live, it's real hot down here. Mm -hmm. Walk around here, super black, with these blonde and red weaves on their hair. They look absolutely ridiculous. Okay, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just telling you straight up. Um, and it also, people are already trying to dilute our femininity. So you got some of these uh, trainees that's walking around here, or some of these men that some of them happen to be dark skinned that want to be women. Right. You got these dark skinned women now, you're looking like them because you're walking around here with all this. And, and that's one of the reasons why you would never see me except for my play. There's a, there's, there are, there is a character in my play. She does the blonde weave. I will say that, but okay. that's the play. Yeah, I, saw that. I saw that. I saw that, but it's the play. Yeah. yeah you'll never see Rashida Strober walk around. Cause to me, if I wore that in my, to me, I would look like a trainer. I'm honest with myself. It looks horrible. Mm -hmm. A dark skinned black woman, her real power and her beauty is to wear her hair in her natural state. Okay. Whether it be like my hair is right now, this is my Afro, whether it be sister locks, dreadlocks. Um, I would even rather see you wear a perm. And I know that that's not natural, but if you permed your own hair and it's your hair, I would rather see you wear that than to stoop so low as to walk around wearing blonde wigs and weaves. To me, it's horrendous. I know some of y'all are going to be offended by it. I don't care. I hate it. I hate seeing it. It's a reflection of, of, of self-hate and white supremacy, and it's all a part of the same. Just It's just despicable. And um, you're also setting an example. We also got to look at, I have a daughter. These women are setting a horrible example for these impressionable young women because they see you out here doing this walk around here with all this these crazy weaves in your hair they feel like my hair isn't good enough and in order for me to be accepted in order for me to get a man i have to go do this too and when black men we have to say are clearly telling y'all we like black women with their natural hair there is a movement of black men who are telling y'all straight up so if your objective which it shouldn't be your only objective but if your if your objective is to get a black man then you should consider wearing your hair natural. Go on YouTube. There's plenty of beautiful black women, natural black women on YouTube who have tutorials, who are showing you what you could do to, to have healthy, natural hair. Okay. So there is no excuse. Stop it. There's no, and I, I came from a mother who wears a wig to this day. And she used to keep me in the wig shop for hours on end in this Asian wig shop that still existed in St. Petersburg, shopping for all types of wigs. And my mom have beautiful natural hair. She will not be caught dead wearing her natural hair. It's self-hate. I love my mama, but it's self-hate. Hmm. Hmm. That's sad. Let's see, uh, let's see what we got to chat. Remember, everyone, thank you for uh thank you for uh joining us. Um, you know, I know you said you have to you have something to do at four, so we have about four more minutes. Go, we'll go ahead and close out. Uh I plugged your uh, website, the um uh, what website did I put in the chat room? Darkskinactivist.com? Yes, I put that in the in the, uh, in the chat room. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Darkskinisbeautifulcampaign.com. Is that your site or no? That's that's it. I'm sorry. I have like um multiple um okay. domain names that are connected to the same one. So it's it's the same one. You got it right. 
Okay. All right. So I'll put that back in the chat room. But uh, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and close out. Anything you'd like to share in closing? And also, how can people get in contact with you? I'll put in your, uh, your site in the uh, chat room. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. They can go to darkskinactivist.com. Um, you can also go to my YouTube channel, Dark Skin TV. Um, and also, I'm on, I'm on all the social media platforms. And you can also email me. If you go to my website, darkskinactivist.com, my email address is there. And also look out for my uh, dark skin play, a dark skin woman's revenge. I'm going to be doing another live stream pay per view um, in 2019, so people from anywhere in the world can watch it. Um, I'm going to make sure I release all that information once I have the date and venue and all that stuff solidified. So yeah. All right, perfect. Again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us, Miss Strober. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, guys. Make sure you go to search for a guru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, or Facebook. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you're new to the platform. Also, make sure you follow uh, Miss Rashida, the dark skin activist. Make sure you guys follow her. Follow her on social media as well. Until next time, family. Peace. Bye, y'all.